Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna build a pair of these end tables and one of them is gonna have completely wireless charging. So stay tuned and check it out. I started by marking out the length of each piece that needed to be cut and then used a grinder with a cutoff wheel to make these cuts. You could also use a jigsaw or a skill saw with a metal cutting blade to cut these pieces to length. These 16 pieces will be enough to make the two end tables. Next I took a scrap piece of plywood and cut it to size to use as a welding template, making sure that the sides were square to each other. Then I cut off the corners in order to give myself some space to weld. Once I had the template, I went back to the metal pieces and put a chamfer on the edges that would butt up against another piece. This gives the weld pool a little bit more surface area to weld to and also keeps some of it below the surface so that later on when I grind everything smooth I don't end up grinding the entire weld away. Here's another look at what I'm talking about. With all the pieces prepped I began assembling them using the template in order to get all the pieces square to each other. I started by tack welding the corners together before going back with a complete weld. This was a lot of short welds, but I tried my best to stagger the area I was welding on so I wouldn't be concentrating all that heat in one spot for too long. That could end up causing warping and in the end cause the table to wobble. And this is pretty much rinse and repeat for both tables, so sit back and enjoy a welding time lapse. Once I had the main vertical leg assemblies welded together, I ground all the joints smooth with a grinder and a flap disc. Before connecting the right and the left legs together with a pair of horizontal pieces, I cut some plugs from some scrap metal and welded them in place, finishing off by grinding the ends smooth. Next, I could connect everything together with a pair of horizontal pieces, taking my time to make sure everything was as square as possible. Same strategy here, I just tack welded all the corners together first before going back with a complete weld later. I needed a way to connect the base to the future wooden top, so I took a few washers and welded them together. I used four of these for each table and welded them in place from the underside of what will be the top.
With all the metal work done and everything ground smooth, I clean the remaining grease off the metal using some lacquer thinner before applying three coats of flat black spray paint. With the bases now complete, I started on the wooden tops. I measured and cut out some maple to length and width before gluing two pieces together for each top, letting the glue dry overnight. I left the tops a bit big so I could come back later and trim them to the exact size of the metal bases. I did this by placing the wood top on the base and then tracing along the base on the underside of the wood. Then I took them over to the miter saw, adjusted the angle on the saw, and cut them to size. With the tops cut to size, I sanded them each to 220 grit. Before applying finish to the wooden tops, I wanted to see it all assembled. I used a self-centering drill bit to pre-drill the holes in the wood, and then I used a few screws to secure the tops in place. I was pretty happy with it so far. And for the finish, I applied three coats of clear satin wipe on poly. This is definitely my go to finish. Once the finish had dried, I reassembled the table and brought it inside to test it out further. This would be replacing the concrete and metal end tables I made a few years back. Check out that video if you're interested. I'll leave a link above. Now you could stop right here and have a perfectly usable set of end tables, but I wanted to take it just one step further by adding wireless charging to one of the tables. The second table I didn't quite finish yet, so I flipped it upside down and traced out the size of the wireless charger on the underside. Then I took my router and began covering out the void for the wireless charger to sit in, leaving about an eighth of an inch of material left on top. This would be a perfect application for a CNC to do this work. I may have to get one of those for the shop. Then I used my combination square to find the difference in height from the bottom of the charger to the bottom of the table. This would be the thickness of the piece of wood I need for the bottom cover plate. Then I took some leftover maple and cut out a piece that was a bit larger than the hole in the bottom of the table. Then using the measurement from before, I marked out the thickness for the cover plate and took it over to the bandsaw to resaw the piece. Now the first attempt at this didn't go very well. Uh, the blade began to wander a little bit so I pulled it back and started again. I'll stabilize this saw cut later with some CA glue and no one will ever see it. Well, I guess besides whomever is watching this video. 
Then I placed this cover plate over the hole and traced it out. Next I took a chisel and scored a line all along this line. This would prevent chip out from the router as I used the router to hog out most of the material. The router was set to the same depth as the thickness of the cover plate so it would sit flush. Next I wanted to add some magnets to keep the cover plate in place when it was flipped over. So I pre-drilled and then inserted some screws into the bottom of the tabletop. Next I placed the magnets on the screws, put the cover plate in place, and hit it with a mallet to make an indent on the cover plate. This showed me exactly where I needed to drill a hole for the magnets to sit flush with the cover plate. I used some CA glue and accelerator to glue the magnets in place. Alright, so I just did a test run, put a few of the screws in just to mount the base to the top and flipped it over. I had the battery pack installed and these four magnets just are not strong enough to keep this cover um, on. It does help that this kind of slides under this portion of the base, so it stays in this side, but again, this cover just kind of uh, goes like that, so it's not really tight. If the battery pack isn't tight against the wooden top, then my phone's not going to charge. So um, I just really want to finish this project. Uh, you can ask my wife how long this has taken. It's it's been it's been a little bit, <laughs> but so I'm just going to do something a little bit not as clean, but still relatively hidden away. You're not really going to see this unless you climb under the table and look. So um, I just cut out this little simple metal plate here. I drilled a hole on this side, so I'm just gonna mount it right here. And then once the cover is on, it's just going to pivot here. If I ever need to open it to charge the battery pack, I can just pivot it away, take the cover off, pivot it back once it's installed again. That's just gonna be my little cop out way to finish this project. So I inserted the screw and the metal plate seemed to work just fine. I applied a wipe on poly finish to the table just as I did with the first one. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to hit that like button. That just tells YouTube that this was a decent video and that maybe it should pass it along to some other people to watch as well. Also it just really helps me grow my channel, so much appreciated if you do that. If you like this video and want to see some other videos that I've made, or if you want to see any upcoming videos that I make, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I release a new video.